On today's show, a Minnesotan takes deer hunting to new heights. Wow, you can't complain about the view. And as we celebrate Minnesota's deer season, it's important to know that times haven't always been good for our white-tailed deer. But when the going gets tough, one organization of hunters gets going. It's beer and chili. Next, Laura Shera is in her home kitchen this week, sharing a tried and true favorite for deer season and, well, football season too. Add in uh, green pepper. And our Minnesota Bound Classic this week is in the spirit of the deer opener. It's simply entitled, Ode to the Whitetail. Those stories and more, next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC dealers. <laughs> Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. You know, we all know how much we Minnesotans love our deer hunting. Well, in our first story, we feature a family that takes deer hunting to, shall I say, new heights. Bill Shirk has the story. Wind power put Buffalo Ridge on Minnesota's map. Yeah, and the wind always blows, yeah. But don't for a second think these giant white towers equal the area's biggest attraction. Just outside the tiny town of Lake Wilson, the other big icon sits on the same ridge. We're looking at a silhouette of a big old buffalo. 77-year-old Walt Van Dyke, a lifelong local farmer with a bit of a creative side. Well, yeah, I'm the artist. Drive Highway 30 and you can't help but notice Walt's work. A larger-than-life plywood buffalo built 25 years ago because Walt wanted to. And this is the metal shed we had. When somebody comes to take a picture, my wife says, who's out there? I said, just some more of my fans. On most farms, old stuff goes to pasture to die. I had that old truck has been sitting here for years. Walt had other ideas. Well, I, I don't know, I just gradually comes into my mind, I guess. We were kind of thinking of something we could build with our grandpa that we could spend time with him. Together, grandpa and grandsons built Lake Wilson's tree stand on a truck. My grandpa was kind of the mastermind behind how his, everything was built. He had the idea of putting it on the flatbed truck and it was my brother and I, we liked that when we heard that because it's different, you don't see it a whole lot. And I guess it's mostly just what you see is what you get. A big old box up top, a rusted F600 Ford below. Oh, and plenty of cable by design. The cables keep it pretty it's steady. It's a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> it is scary, a lot better than last year. Though. Remember, the stand sits on Minnesota's windiest bridge. This is what it looks like after it tipped over. Last summer, a sudden storm squashed the stand. This is the frame laying on the side. It was kind of a mess. So grandpa and grandsons got back to work. Good job, Grant. The storm totaled the tin shack, and the grandsons agreed to cut back on the 14-foot high posts. We got some pillows and blankets and some sleeping bags. We got our guns, everything we need to hunt in the morning. The new stand still sits high enough that move-in day takes shortcuts. The tree stand on a truck. Watch out for the nails today. Yeah. 
the sudden deer opener tradition with comfy camp digs, but no kitchen. It's dinner time. Woo! No matter, that's what grandma's for. I'm gonna make some gravy up. Uh, the night before, my grandma usually goes all out and uh, makes a fantastic supper. Dinner in deer camp. More importantly, <laughs> together. And I guess that's kind of the point of this story. The perfect project brought this family together <laughs> with just one snag. Can't move a tree stand on a truck with a blown engine. Grandpa's got that covered too. If we want to move it, just put, hook the tractor on it, pull it somewhere else. Makes sense that a deer would pull a deer stand. Uh, it's definitely something you don't see. It's one of a kind. One of a kind. One heck of a story. Life in deer camp on a ridge named after the buffalo. This particular piece. When we return, we'll meet an organization of hunters that care, care about the whitetail and their habitat. Their story next. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota's select GMC dealers, Ice Force, Star Bank, Radco Truck Accessories, and by Evanroot the official outboard motor of Minnesota Bound. Welcome back. You know, we tend to think that white-tailed deer have always been abundant in Minnesota, but that's not the case, which brings up our story about the Minnesota Deer Hunters Association and why they were formed in days when deer were scarce. Travis Frank has the story. The white-tailed deer, a majestic and hardy creature that ranges from Minnesota's big woods to the north, all the way to the farmlands of the south. We love our white-tailed deer. Each fall, more than a half a million Minnesota hunters take to their stands in hopes of bringing home venison for the table. While deer cover much of our landscape today, there was a time when Minnesota's herd nearly vanished. The year was 1969. I was younger then, and I remember going out with my dad, and we cut brows, and we lost an ax in the snow. Snow was probably 36 inches, maybe 40 inches. February's cold and snow had delivered a knockout punch. It was just incredible. The deer were starving. Upset over the dying deer, a handful of hunters took action. And they actually took frozen, dead deer carcasses, put them in a pickup, drove them to the state legislature steps, and hauled them out. People were just freaking out. Their sign in their message was simple. Save Minnesota's deer. The name stuck. The organization Save Minnesota's Deer was born. They were trying to get attention uh, because their, their voices weren't being heard. And it, in fact, things got so bad in 1971, there was not a deer season in Minnesota. Slowly, their conservation message grew. So too did Minnesota's deer numbers. It was a single issue thing, essentially to create more habitat for the white-tailed deer. In 1980, their name changed one final time. So we need a unified voice that goes beyond just habitat. This particular piece... Rod Dimmich became one of 10 founding members. Ed Schmidt was another. M MDHA started uh, with the objective of hunting, habitat, education, and legislation. Those are the four main objectives. Our membership at that time was five bucks. We wanted to make it so it was affordable for any deer hunter in the state. If you wonder how many Minnesotans care about their deer, simply look around. 
He said, if we get um, 10,000 in 10 years, we would be doing well, and we surpassed that. Today, their grassroots efforts have spread to 63 chapters and more than 20,000 members. That we have 600 members in this chapter. In Grand Rapids, this banquet raises money for Habitat and helps fund their growing Four Corn camps. In Four Corn One, the kids get their firearm safety, plus hunting ethics, you know, and all the hunting skills, the orienteering. Last year, it was 869 kids that went to camp for one full week. It's all about the future. It's all about the kids. It's about the resource. It's about uh, the magic of deer hunting. This is kind of showing that we believe in the uh, traditions of the past and we want to carry them forward. When, when you look at all of this, the history, and think you were part of this, what does that do for you? It just makes me feel really good. It really does. It becomes a part of you, you know, and, and every little memory, you just keep collecting it and collecting it, and, and then after a certain point, you want to help other people create memories. So, yeah, that's what it's pretty much about. Creating memories and giving a voice to an animal that can't speak. That's the goal of the Minnesota Deer Hunters Association. We don't stop in good year or bad year. We're, we're looking at how DNR is managing the herd. We're looking at wolf management in, in that issue. Uh, we're looking at how to improve habitat. So in the ups and downs of good winter, bad winter, good season, bad season, we're always there as a steady voice of the Minnesota Deer Hunter. Here we are 35 years later uh, with 20,000 members, so they did something right. And to think this all began with a few frozen deer carcasses on the Capitol doorstep, placed there by a few hunters that care. We're gonna create elk beard chilies. Coming up, Laura is in the home kitchen sharing a family recipe. What's cooking? Let's just say it's perfect for chilly fall evenings. Closed captioning is brought to you by Connecticut. Okay, it's time to go wild in the kitchen. Daughter Laura has a big game chili that just fits the spirit of the season. Fall season is not only hunting season, but it's also football season. And there are two things that scream Sunday football. You know what they are? It's beer and chili. So today we're gonna get wild in the kitchen and we're gonna create elk beard chili so you can share your wild game with your friends if either you're tailgating or home gating watching the game. So a couple key ingredients that we have, of course, number one most important is elk. It's actually one of my favorite wild game meats to eat. It's delicious. Also, I like to use stout beer in my chili as well as cocoa powder and a tiny dash of cinnamon. But to get started, first we are going to saute our onions. So we're gonna put our onion into the bottom of the pan. You can hear that sizzling. We're also gonna add uh, three cloves to four cloves of garlic. We're going to saute these. And for the next step, it is time to brown our ground elk. So we're gonna add that to our onion and garlic mix here. Now it is time to add all those delicious spices. So we're gonna add a little smoked paprika in there. We have some dried oregano. Of course, we have the ever important ingredient, chili powder, ground cumin, a little bit of cayenne pepper. And here comes the special ingredient, cocoa powder, dash of cinnamon. Salt, I prefer smoked sea salt. Again, one of my favorite ingredients to cook with for wild game. As you can see, I use it quite frequently because I'm almost out. All right, now that our elk has browned up really nicely, we are going to add in uh, green pepper, red pepper, and I also like to add poblano pepper. It has a little bit of spice to it, so it is optional, but it adds great flavor. Now for our featured ingredient, which is stout beer, we're gonna add that to the mixture. 
Now for our last two ingredients, we're just gonna add a cup of crushed tomatoes, and then it's time to add your beans of choice. I prefer black beans, but really any bean would do, pinto beans. So the last and final step is just to cover the pot and let it simmer on low for about 30 minutes. Mmm, I think it is done. Look at that. All of our flavors had 30 minutes to blend together here, and now it is time to label it and serve it. All right, so we're gonna top it with traditional chili toppings, which is a little bit of shredded cheddar cheese, a dollop of sour cream, of course, goes with chili perfectly. And I like to eat mine with a little bit of shredded cilantro. And now it's time for my favorite part, which of course is the taste test. So I'm gonna take a little sample here. Very good, definitely has a smoky flavor, goes perfectly with the elk. And speaking of elk, remember, Share your wild game with your family and friends. And why not do that while you're watching a football game? Up next, there's a famous ode to the nightingale, but here in Minnesota, how about an ode to the deer? Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Border View Lodge, Ellsworth Creamery and by Totem Resorts. Time now for our Minnesota Bond Classic and you know if you've hunted deer as long as I have you tend to develop great respect for that animal hence the story Ode to a white-tailed deer. When autumn glows under the ruddy moon, this is your time, old friend of mine, you, the white-tailed deer. Your beauty is forever awesome. Your grace is nature's best. I never tire of seeing you, old friend of mine, you, the white-tailed deer. They say these are the good old days for you and your kind. You roam not only the forest, but the fields and farms too. There was a time when this century began, you were almost gone. Now we've got you coming back to 20 million strong. Now you're plentiful and sometimes a pest crossing a road, but still a pretty pest. And here's to you, old bighorn buck. You're a royal sight, a majesty in antlers. You're the fantasy of every deer hunter in the woods. And that includes me, old friend of mine, you, the white-tailed deer. Since time began, you're the prey and I've been the predator. For a million years we've played these roles, while I made you and you made me. Today some say the game should end, that you're too pretty to be hunted down. Against me, you can't defend. Yes, they're talking about you, old friend of mine, you, the white-tailed deer. But nature's laws cannot be changed. It's been the hunt for you that gives you grace that makes your feet so fleet. Your eyes and ears and good nose too are gifts from a hunt so bittersweet. If the world will listen, I'd like to say, every autumn it's an honor and a challenge and a privilege. And I'd like to make this clear, to share the woods with you, old friend of mine, you, the white-tailed deer. <laughs> Truly amazing animal, and you know you never get tired of watching them. At least I don't. Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Take him deer hunting. I'm Ron Chair, and of course, the star of the show, and she knows it, that's Raven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web 
at mnbound.com. Share your stories on the Minnesota Bound Facebook page under the Share Your Story tab.